Hi, I'm Dr. Jason J. Campbell, and thanks for watching my video. Um, in this video, I'm going to do um, a brief introduction to symbolic interactionism, which is primarily a sociological uh, theory. It has its basis, uh, its foundation, its grounding in American pragmatism, which is a form of uh, our branch of philosophy. Um, so indirectly, you know, there, there's a great affinity between um, the social theory and, and philosophy. Um, so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about symbolic, symbolic uh, interactionism, how it works, how do we understand it, um, how is it operative um, in our day-to-day -day society. So with that, let's begin. Alright, so this is uh, symbolic interactionism. Alright, symbolic interactionism. This might actually not be dark enough. Um, Alright, so in the discussion of um, symbolic interactionism, um, we begin, there are many places that we can begin discussion, but primarily um, we begin the discussion with this, this notion of self, right? This idea of who am I, right? So we begin with uh, sort of an investigation into sort of self concept. Um, and anytime we're talking about interactionism, um, there are a number of ways that we can talk about interactionism. With respect to interactionism, in a philosophical sense, um, this sort of has its grounding in Cartesian dualism, right? Um, which is primarily the distinction between the mind and the body. And how do we make sense of the interaction between this dualism, right? Between that which is uh, substantial and that which is immaterial. Uh, I haven't done a lecture on uh, Cartesian dualism yet, so I'm not going to get into too much discussion on that now. Um, in a sociological setting, it's sort of the distinction, the attempt to understand the sort of polemic uh, discourse between the self and the social. Right? It's sort of the attempt to understand the distinction between the self and the social, right? What is the self? What is the social? What is the relationship between the self and the social, right? There seem to be um, two, two ends, two ends to um, either side of this continuum, right? The, the distinction between the self and the social. How do we come to sort of formalize this? Well, the first thing that we have to recognize in a discussion of um, symbolic interactionism is that when we're talking about the self, we have to know exactly how it is that we're talking about the self. There's two different schools of thought. There's an, there's an Iowa school, there's a Chicago school. I'm not going to get into the distinction between the two different schools of thought. Um, with respect to um, symbolic interactionism uh, as a whole, what you'll find out in theory in general is that there's a separation between um, the I, right? My understanding of myself, right? I want to be aware. I want to be aware of my understanding, right? So that in a discussion of self, we can talk about the I and we can talk about the me, right? I can talk about the I and I can talk about the me in a discussion of self. And what the symbolic interactionist wants to do is begin the discussion, um, one way of doing it at least, is beginning the discussion of the self in um, relationship to an understanding of this I and me. Okay, so if I am talk, if I I'm talking about myself, my interaction with others. Um, well, obviously, when I use I, right, I'm talking about the, well, you'd have to think about it. Well, if I'm talking about myself, I'm, I'm talking about myself as the subject, right, as the subject of investigation. So when I'm referencing I, this is the self, a view of the self as, okay. Um, when I'm talking about me, right, when I'm talking about um, my concerns, my desires, me, um, what I've done is I've objectified, arguably, this is the, the claim, I've objectified the self. So I'm talking about self as object, right? So that you have the distinction between the I and the me in a discussion on self. Um, before we get too deep into this, it's, it's sort of... Uh, important that we understand exactly how this distinction plays out. And the way that we make sense of this distinction is to understand exactly what symbolic interactionism really is, right? We know that it's um, this attempt to make an account for 
the separation between the self and the social, right? And not only is it a, an attempt to make a separation between the self and the social, but in talking about the self, I recognize that I'm going to be talking about my concerns, my desires, my beliefs, my goals, my aspirations, and so on, right? I can talk about those things subjectively, or I can talk about those things objectively, right? In an attempt to talk about my desires, my beliefs, my goals, and so on, uh, objectively, what I've done is I've, I've, I've removed myself, right? I've removed my beliefs, I've removed my desires from it, um, and I'm viewing myself as object, right? Um, well, there's, um, there's a, bit, a bit of philosophy that can be used to make sense of symbolic interactionism, right? In symbolic interactionism, I recognize that my own interpretation of self, right, my understanding of who I am, um, is only possible insofar as I am um, situated within this nexus of individuals, right, within a, a social setting, within society. So that the social really becomes nothing more than a nexus of interaction, right? So you have all of these people, you have myself in the middle, and my interaction sort of with all of these individuals, right? And they're bi-directional arrows in each, in, in, in each case, right? So that I come to formulate I come to formulate uh, the concept of me, the objectified me, I come to formulate the, con the concept of I, the self, myself as subject, um, based on my interaction with other individuals, right? So that the, si the society is nothing, and this, these arrows would be, and I'm going to go into more detail on this, would be interaction, right? So um, my understanding of myself is a consequence of this social nexus, right? This this web of interconnectivity with other individuals, and my interaction with these individuals, how I arrive at my um, self-concept, right? Now, obviously, this has implications beyond sociology, right? This has psychological implications, political implications, and so on. Um, primarily, however, it's a sociological tool, so that in in the discussion of symbolic interactionism, I realize that my self-identity is um, only valid, is only understandable in a nexus of interconnection with other individuals. So it would be illogical to talk about um, self-identity where I am the only self, right? If there was a world and there was only one individual in that world and there were no interactions with any other, any other individuals, I wouldn't be able to arrive at this um, notion of self-identity because I don't have that very valuable um, interaction with others. Um, now, um, the, the question then becomes, okay, so we sort of understand now what the interactionism part refers to, right? It's um, a consequence of this social nexus, right? This social, this social nexus, um, to be technical, this social nexus of interconnection, interaction, right? Um, so that this is a consequence, my identity is a consequence of this social interaction. Um, we don't quite yet understand uh, the symbolic part. Um, and there are many different ways in which the, the symbolic part of symbolic interactionism has been discussed um, by many, many different theorists, philosophers, sociologists, uh, poli sci folk, psychologists. But I wanted to do my own take on symbolic uh, interactionism. Um, and this is just one of many different interpretations of the theory. Um, I think my take is going to give a, a nice little twist to it, and I haven't seen anyone do this before. And the, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use a philosopher um, by the name of um, George Berkeley. And uh, Berkeley talks, he, he is a, an idealist. He's a very particular brand of idealist, though. He's a subjective idealist, and Berkeley, generally, I'll do another video lecture on this at another point, denies the existence of the external world. He thinks that the external world is only a construct of the human mind. Now, how in the world does that relate to symbolic interactionism 